And I want to introduce you to Rod Sellers, who, um, by the way, has uh, attended every Winterfest. This is our 10th one, 10th annual, and he's been at every festival. Morning. Morning. Uh, I am by trade a teacher and a historian, not a photographer. So I'm an amateur, but I take a lot of pictures, and that's the secret. If you take a thousand pictures, you're bound to get a couple of good ones. Uh, this actually developed out of a program that I did uh, for the City of Chicago Artist Month in October, and the theme was City as Studio. So the idea is to get your artwork from local sources. So I was looking in that presentation at Urban Life, Industry, and Nature. Um, originally, my work as a photographer, I kind of started out as a, as a historian. So I would document. And then people would look and they'd say, hey, you've got a good eye. You've got a neat picture here. So I started getting a little bit more artistic. Uh, this presentation will focus on nature as a theme and local nature. Now, in art, there's a lot of things. I'm going to focus on photography. But there are other forms of art which can use nature as a theme. Uh, a woman by the name of Mary King, who is somewhat modern, and focuses on industry actually has a couple of paintings that look at nature. And I wish our uh, student artists who were here were back so they could explain this one to me. But uh, this is Mary King's By the Lake. And I'm not an art critic, so I can't explain it. Uh, this is Mary King's wetland. But the point is that she is using nature as a thing. Muralists have a tendency to use nature. And it's kind of interesting. Uh, this is a mural that's at 100th Street and Ewing Avenue. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually have a couple of people here who helped to paint that mural. Because that one, Kevin that one. and Joanne, actually, <laughs> and their hands numbers. on this one. Uh, Paint by numbers, yes. Noel is a uh, teacher at St. Francis High School, and there was a mural there previously, which over the years had gotten very worn. But if you look on the right-hand side of the mural, I mean, it, it mostly talks about the history and uh, some of the little intricacies of the southeast side of Chicago, but on the right-hand side and sort of in the background are some of those nature things. Uh, he's got the uh, green uh, monk parakeets who are in the area. He's got some cattail reed on the right-hand side. So there's, there's a recognition of nature in that particular mural. Now this is a mural from what was the location? 100th Street in Ewing, uh, Indianapolis, where that intersection comes together. Yeah, okay. Uh, Noel did, at least on his computer, a mural that was supposed to fit on a fence. That's why the black line is there, because that's the shape of the fence. Uh, but it was sort of, and this is his explanation of that mural, okay, that it's uh, symbolic of the area's history, which of course is a big theme for muralism. But then it says, uh, the steel mill's closed, now everybody's on this think green face. So it's the evolution from left to right is industry to nature. That's sort of his explanation. So again, artists using nature as a thing. Now my expertise, whatever, interest, let's call it that, is uh, <coughs> the southeast side, and it's, it's natural and industrial scenes. We're going to focus on natural scenes today. And it, it's kind of surprising. Now this is this is sort of the... Uh, the Typical picture, and I'll bet, I'll bet a dozen people have taken this picture, at least, in one shape or form. And it's that big marsh, pictures taken from Stony Island Avenue looking east towards the former Acme Coke plant. If you took that picture today, about 80% uh, of the structures in the background would be gone because mm -hmm. that plant is being raised. Just a couple of things left. Uh, the Fragmites in the water is still there. <laughs> um, and then, because this is the Wolf Lake Initiative, I wanted to focus on pictures and images taken at Wolf Lake. And maybe if you're interested in photography and you got one of those digital cameras, uh, these are some perhaps some ideas that you might take. And I'm going to run through these pretty quickly. But one of my favorite, you know, themes for pictures is early morning. You know, a lot of people take those dawn shots and 
uh, sunset shots. I don't have any sunset shots in Wolf Lake, and I take most of my pictures in Illinois, and the sun's the wrong way. <laughs> but I've got some dawn pictures, which is the main reason that I've attended every wetland festival, because it gets me out to Wolf Lake at dawn. And you get some really neat pictures of Wolf Lake at dawn. Yeah. Yeah. Darkness is perhaps a little bit. No, okay. That's good. It's a little better. Uh, but this was a uh, you know an early morning picture at Wolf Lake. It's actually taken in February. Uh, we were out there one day for a festival, winter festival, or for a wetland festival, and a couple of guys out there fishing. They beat us out there that morning. So these are all kind of dawn pictures of Wolf Lake. Okay, and then in general, scenery. I, I've often thought about putting together one of those PowerPoints that everybody sends around the internet, you know, and you get them all the time, uh, and call it, you know, something like, would you believe you're in the city of Chicago? Because these pictures are all taken at Wolf Lake, uh, Indiana side, or I'm sorry, Illinois side, uh, and I'm from the southeast side, which is why I end up taking most of my pictures over there. But, uh, you know, these are, uh, these are the kind of things you see floating around where people are going out to the North Woods and they're going out to the mountains in uh, the Rockies and things and taking kind of pictures. And yet, you've got pictures like that right in your backyard. And these are, these are all Wolf Lake pictures. And actually, uh, some of my favorite places to take pictures in Wolf Lake is back along the Avenue K Channel, that area east of the Avenue K Channel. Across from Club 81, those of you who don't know natural spots but know the good eating <laughs> spots <laughs> and where the bars are. Uh, and, and it doesn't matter whether it's you know winter or fall because you get a different kind of a look at some of these places. Every once in a while you catch a critter. Okay, winter is another you know, very uh, appropriate theme uh, for Wolf Lake. Whoa. And you know, just you get out to Wolf Lake, there's just some really neat really things out there. We call this one white on white. And uh, the water, well, <laughs> the water there is Indian Creek, which is on the Indiana side near the old concession stand. And we haven't had that real bitter cold yet this winter. The one where almost everything in the lake freezes, but Indian Creek does not freeze. And the ducks and the swans and the geese all end up over here when everything else freezes. So if you really want to see a lot of critters go out there, this was taken, you know, when it was one of those like three, four days in a row where it was zero or below. And that's where all the critters ended up. Okay, and then you got, you know, the natural life at Wolf Lake. And here, for the most part, you got to know how to use close-up lights. But there's some really neat... Oh, we go back to Frank Williams. Let's get on the here. These are a lot better with a really dark room, but, but again, these are all pictures taken at Wolf Lake, and I think it, you know, sort of emphasizes the natural beauty that, in effect, is right in your backyard. Uh, and then, of course, you got critters, and you know, if you can get close up, it's hard to take a bad picture of the swan. They're they're just they're beautiful animals. And that looks like a picture of uh, plants and everything, but if you look real carefully, there's a critter in there. And there's actually a pond back at the Avenue K Channel. There's about three or four separate ponds back there, and I always call this one Turtle Pond. Because if you walk out there, you're bound to find several turtles back there. Except you got to be real quiet, because they are very scared. Slight as sound, they're very hard to get pictures. And, and pictures, another you know, source in terms of, of uh, critters is if you can catch birds in flight. It's neat, but it's hard. 
And again, I think, I think the real secret to uh, photography is to take a lot of pictures. <laughs> and of course, Photoshop helps too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean create, but you know, manipulate. You can uh, crop, change things a little bit. Everybody cooperated on this shot except the clown in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a swan. And then again, the spring is it's great because you get the family views. Uh, red winged blackbird. Uh, usually, when I go back in the Avenue K channel and walk around, and there's nobody back there usually. You're just walking around by yourself. But this guy will, you know, he'll screech and let everybody know you're there. Yeah. And then he goes from tree to tree, accompanying you on your walk. Now this isn't Wolf Lake. This is right outside Calumet Park. Okay, uh, there was an area in Wolf Lake, and actually, I in the previous years, up until two years ago, I would go out every every week at least to take pictures because I had a spot where I could get close to a swan's nest. While the swans are nesting elsewhere, and I can't I can't find their nest or find how close I can't get close to their nest anymore. So some of these pictures are a couple of years old. But uh, but again, you know, the swans are kind of a it's it's really hard. They're a beautiful bird. And here's this was kind of an interesting day when two geese tried to take over the swans. And uh, swans don't like that. And they're bigger and meaner than the geese, believe it or not. There's your end result. And for about four years, the swans would come back to the same nest. So it's kind of neat to be able to go out there and get a whole bunch of really, really neat pictures. How close could you get? Are you going to tell it, it depends on where I'm at. And, and I mean, a telephoto is important, but, but the place at Wolf Lake where they were nesting, I was able to get about 10 to 12 feet from the nest. And there was water around it, so they weren't intimidated, they weren't afraid. Uh, some of these pictures, actually, if you know where that, uh, right next to the concession stand, there's uh, like an inlet protected area. Uh, I think they used to have boats in there before. Uh, they would come in there, but they haven't been there for a year or so. Yeah, these aren't these aren't with a super telephoto lens. This is getting pretty close. Okay, and then I call this intrusions. This is like something to fit here. You got a beautiful little Avenue K channel, and there's a guy with a kayak, you know, coming down the channel. Nature and a kayak. And then these, this is something you won't see. These are, you know, from the old Nike base back there, and those have all been removed. It's sort of, uh, you know, the Hagrish's own stone edge. <laughs> and then. I can't draw. I can't even paint a fill in the dots picture. But I can do that. Which looks like a paint. And this? I shouldn't have told you that revolution. I didn't. And let you think that I painted them. They're actually photos. And then you play with Photoshop and you manipulate it, and that's what you get. So you start with that, and you end up with that. And if you want to get a little bit abstract, now this abstract is Mary King, but it can do something like that. I, yeah. and I mean, think what you want to take out of this is just that, you know, nature's all around us. It's in your backyard. Grab the camera, go on out, take a lot of pictures, and enjoy it.